Is it? It's on? Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Good evening. <clears throat> Here we are at New Beginning Church again. We had a little problem with the video. I hit the wrong button and something came up and so we got things going now, so uh, we'll continue. <clears throat> it's uh, my whole like sort of like lesson is uh, experiencing God's word to you. Can you hold on one second? I have to shut a door. There we are. So, a lot of people <clears throat> that I talk to thinks it's it's something that you have to like uh, turn on the radio to experience God's word. You have you have to do something, and. I have found through my life that it's not anything that per se I have to take a step one, step two, step three to listen to God speaking to me. It just comes. And I think it comes to everyone my dad always said, I would tell him, you know, just listen for his guidance. And he said, oh, God doesn't speak to me, but he speaks to you. And I said, no, he speaks to everybody. And I try to take the simplest little things that people experience Uh like, I pick up a World War II veteran Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I go to a little town called Big Run, Pennsylvania. It's a little wee town. And I drive out there, which is only 10, 15 minutes from Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. So I drive out there, pick him up at his house, bring him back to this restaurant where he likes to eat. And in doing that, I was driving him to the restaurant and I said to him, you are, uh, how can I put that? Uh, A special person to the restaurant and his nickname is Sweet Pea. So we get to the restaurant and one of the waitresses, which I had no conversation with, right there where he, his favorite little booth that he sits in had a note, Sweet Pea, you're a special person. Right there, in front of him. And I told him that when we're driving to the restaurant. So, and I look at it, you know, what made her write that on that paper? And I brought it to her attention that I told Sweet Pea that he was a very special person to the restaurant. And he just like, oh, you know, whatever. And here you, the waitress, writes that on, you know, the, the, the paper that you have down that they put your meal on and everything 
Well, she turned it over and wrote on that little sheet of paper, Sweet Pea, you're a very special person. So I said to her, what made you do that? She said, well, I just got the idea to put that down for Sweet Pea, because I knew you were bringing them, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, when it, if it was Monday or Wednesday, or I knew you were bringing them. So I just wrote it down. And I said, I told her, when I told her what I told him, I said, that is just a very, the very way that God speaks to us. Now, I believe that God put that on your mind. He spoke to you to put that on the paper. And you, you did it. And through my study of the scriptures, God speaks to man's heart, his soul. Your soul is the center of your consciousness. You can be influenced by God or you can be influenced by Satan. It has nothing to do with being possessed or anything, but you can be influenced by the center of your consciousness. So that thought came to the center of your consciousness and then it went to your brain. And did you want to do it? And that's the very same way that we live our lives, God speaking to the center of our consciousness. It goes to your brain, which now you have free will. God gave you one of the greatest gifts in the world, a free will. Now you have the free will to do what he just gave that thought to you. Thoughts are not created. You do not create thoughts. Nobody can create a thought. They come to you. So when they come, it goes to your brain. You have a choice now to do what the thought that is from the center of your consciousness to your brain. You have the free will to do it or not to do it. So that's how I explain to this waitress that you just experienced God's word to you and putting that on that paper that made him feel really good and I told him that that was going to not be there on that paper but I told him they think you're a very special person so it was God speaking to me to start it and I told him and God speaking to a waitress and she did it now she didn't have to do that so it's a very simple, God speaks to everyone. And I go back and I can think of many, 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 many times that God has spoken to me. And I used to call them an I know. Now see, when I was not a Christian, born again, knowing that the Lord is, I look for his guidance all the time. I used to say, I know. I used to know things that were going to happen. So everybody wants to get, oh man, you know, here we go in Twilight Zone. No, it's just, a, it's a gift. People have certain gifts. 
And God was so gracious enough to give me the gift of foresight for some things. Not everything, just for some things. So it, it's when we're doing things, people never even consider or think about why they did things and how they came about with the knowledge to do something. And it's very easily, it, it was the Lord speaking to you. Now, if I would get in the center of my consciousness, punch Tom in the nose, it would go to my brain. Now, I have a choice either to punch Tom in the nose or not to. Now, knowing the Word and reading Scripture, I have the knowledge that that is not from God. So I say, no, I will not punch Tom in the nose. So that's a very, like, a, for instance, an analogy on how you can discern who is influencing your center of consciousness. So we, we can go along, and it's so very easy when I told that waitress that God spoke to you, and I told her the whole story, she was flabbergasted. Like, oh my gracious, you know. And I said, that is how easy it is to obey the Lord. If you are looking, listening, for his guidance, you'll know it. You will hear it. So it was a, a long, long, well, a good while ago. I met a, a man. He was a, an evangelist. And he Just one day, I was at church in California. It was Hilltop Community Church. And his name was Matt Glesby. And I'm sitting in church, and all of a sudden, this gentleman comes to church with his wife, and he had his daughter there. He sat down right beside me. So we introduced each other, you know, my name's Ron Byers and Matt Gillespie, how are you doing, you know, and, and instantly, I befriended him, and it was just so easy to talk to him, and as I got to know him, I saw almost like the Apostle Paul in him. Anytime we would be discussing things, he would say, well, let's look in the Word, see what it says about that. So here I am, just amazed how God allowed or me to befriend a person as strong in the word as he was. Now, he, he didn't work for anybody. He didn't have a job where nine to five, go to work. He would go from El Sobrani, where he lived. He rented a home. And he's been in the Bay Area four or five times. New tons of ministers. He did a lot of, I guess, work with Teen Challenge. But he would, every day, 
get in his truck and go to San Francisco and work with street people. Now, this is what he did. This was what he said God called him to do. And he was just being obedient. And God met every need of Matt Glesby in the four years that I was associated with him, that he lived in the Bay Area, and I lived in El Sobrani too. But it was amazing to know such a person. You know, I was just, how thank you, Lord, that Matt and I are good friends. We would go to breakfast and we were talking. He was a hunter. And <clears throat> one day, I don't know what the situation was, but he had a Bible class in Visalia, California, which he started 25 years ago. And his wife called the Bible class down there and said, Matt needs to find a good friend. He knows all kind of ministers and everything. You know, he knows the pastor of the church. But he needs a certain person, a good friend, to, I guess, chum along with. And Matt got cancer. He had colon cancer. And during the whole period that I knew Matt, he was a hunter and he orchestrated a hunting trip that I brought my dad out to California and we went in up to Utah and hunted mule deer, which I wanted to do with my dad for years. I wanted to do that. But he orchestrated the whole thing, and here we are. My dad came out with my younger brother, and we had a little camper, went to Utah, and hunted mule deer. And during this whole time, it was a, a bunch of Christian hunters that Matt was associated with. And every year they would go to Utah to hunt mule deer. So at his, Matt had colon cancer and he passed away. And the last day I visited him to come and pray over him, he looked at me and he said, partner. So that's all he said. And later on, when I left, later on that night, he passed away. And at his funeral in Visalia, which I went down, one of his best friends that were in this Bible class that he started came up to me and he says, you know, when you were on that hunting trip with your dad up in Utah, I w wanted to talk to you then. And it was like the good Lord said, no, wait. So I was at a, a little table, so he came over and sat down beside me and he said, I, w I want you to know this, that Matt's wife called the Bible class and pray and asked us to pray to provide Matt with a companion. She said he's lonely and he needs a companion and the companion must be a hunter. 
So it wasn't a week later that she called me and said, you can stop the prayers for Matt to meet a companion that is a hunter. He met a guy at church named Ron Byers. So when he said that to me, <coughs> I never, ever in any time thought how I, this, his best buddy said, you were a tremendous blessing to Matt. And I never really looked at myself blessing him. I was thought that I was receiving all the blessing by knowing such an upstanding Christian man. So when he said that to me, it just blew me away. I never would say that I am a blessing to Matt. And that's exactly what it was. How God works is just amazing. It was just during that, those times that we spent together, he called me and said, I'm having a hard time. And I think it was 2 o'clock in the morning. Can you come over and pray? I got right up, drove to his house and was praying with him. And he asked me, Ron, what should I do? And I, I never even thought about it. The words just came out of my mouth, go to the hospital. And he looked at his wife, Doris, and said, call the ambulance. And they went to the hospital. And it was a whole current of events my pastor was in there. He was in a room. It would, took a long time to get him admitted. And I was wondering why. He was down here before. They know his history. They know everything. He was getting a long time being admitted. Finally, they admitted him. And he was in a room where two beds. One bed had a elderly gentleman in his bed. And I'm sitting in there in that room and Doris is telling me that some history of the gentleman that's in the room beside Matt. He was a German soldier in the SS. And I'm sitting there, and his name was Frank, and he has brain cancer. Well, I found out that the reason why it took so long for him to get a room, that they didn't think, they thought Matt was going to die. So they put him in a hospice room. So we were in there, and I just had a, a question, I said, Jesus, do you want me to go over and talk to Frank about you? And I got an answer. No. 
And I'm sitting there. Now I am confused. But I'm going to obey. So a couple of days, I was working the extra board on the railroad. It, what that means is I get called all hours in the morning, afternoon, daylight, anything. But while Matt was in that hospital, every day I had time, not getting called to go to work, to go visit him. And he was in the, uh, oh, I can't think of the town. Anyways, he was in the county hospital. So I come in there one morning, one afternoon, and Frank's bed is empty. And Doris was there, his wife, with Matt. And Doris got to know Frank. When his food would come there, she would go over and help him feed him and do things. One day, Doris is telling me that Pastor Stewart from our church came down to visit Matt. Doris asked Jesus to have Pastor Stewart talk to Frank about Jesus. So Pastor Stewart was there and he prayed and he was leaving. He was walking towards down the aisle to leave the hospital. And Doris was sitting there and she was just thinking to herself, Lord, I know you wanted me to ask Pastor Stewart to talk to Frank. I know that in my soul. As Pastor Stewart was walking out of the hospital, he said that his feet got so heavy that he couldn't walk no more. He turned around, and as he's walking back towards Matt's room, his feet got light. So he walks back into Matt's room, and goes over to Doris, and says, Do you think anybody would object to me talking to Frank about Jesus? And Doris looked at him with a smile and said, no, I don't, I think that's perfectly fine. Which Pastor Stewart did. He went over there and talked to Frank about Jesus, explained who he was, what God has done for him, what Jesus died on the cross for him, that he wants all to be in everlasting happiness with him. And he just explained that to Frank. Frank accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior with my pastor there. They prayed. That evening, Frank passed away. When I come into the room and his bed was empty, Frank was gone. So I said to Doris, what happened to Frank? And she told me he passed away. She told me everything had happened. And it wasn't a week, maybe four or five days later, they come in and tell Matt to go home. So we were all at Matt's home talking on current events on how Matt got there, how Frank got saved, and Matt is back home in his house. And the pastor was there, and everything that happened was for Frank. And I look at Matt said to me, the pain he was experienced that night, 
he said, Ron, I hope that the Lord doesn't ask me to do that again because that pain was really, really severe and bad. So you look at things, how God answers prayer, how he speaks to us. And it is when you start thinking of things that happen, how they happen, sometimes he tells you why they happen. So it is just an amazing thing that the scripture in my heart keeps going, be not conformed to the world. The world wants you to believe that it, God doesn't speak to you like that in this age that we're living in. And I will say to anyone, I know he speaks to each and every one of us, and we don't even realize it's God. I give God all the glory for the good, bad, and ugly. I give him all the glory. I, anything that comes in front of me, I play hot potato with it and give it to Jesus. Guide me, Lord. Show me what you want me to do with this. Anything. I said before, if I drop a bowling ball on my foot, I will thank Jesus for that foot. Now, I know it's going to hurt, but I will thank him for the foot. That's the first thing that I do anymore. I thank him. So it's, it is a, a world that we're living in that Satan is working overtime to try to convince people that God doesn't lead, guide, heal. He doesn't do that. I know he does. So when I see, when I look around, and I, I see things that are going on, how someone can be the nation and like China, what they do to their own people. It certainly isn't God doing that. It's Satan himself. Satan drove Hitler. Satan drove, you know, a lot of people that kill, destroy. God guides people to combat Satan. So this whole thing about You know, the, the NBA looking to uplift China. I can't understand how LeBron James can even think of telling some the, the news media that that coach that made that tweet about Hong Kong support them for their freedom can be so misinformed I know how he can be misinformed. He's not thinking of a godly act. He's thinking of his own. Me, me, I, I. And it says in the scriptures, in the last days, we will be living in a me, me, I, I generation. And if you look around you today, you look and you observe 
things that are happening. The NFL doesn't want the, the owners of the team to be called owners. They say that is uh, back in the uh, slavery days where the owners owned slaves. Now, you want to be ridic ridiculous. They don't want the title of Jerry Jones or the Dallas Cowboys to be called an owner of the Dallas Cowboys. They don't want the Roonies to be called the owners of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, that to me is absurd. So, look around you and open your eyes and spiritual ears to what God is showing us today on what is happening. Where are kids saying, you cannot reprimand me to their parents? Where is that coming from? I believe I know, and I believe a lot of you know, it's not coming from God. So, it is a, the things that are going on, God opens your spiritual eyes and he will show you things that aren't of him. And he will show you things that are of him. So the only thing that I could say is, don't think it's so hard to listen, to hear, and obey experiencing God's word to you. It's sort of like that old saying, the harder you think it is, the harder it will be. So it's sort of, look at it, God wants us to hear him. He loves us so much that he gave us that center of consciousness, our soul, and a brain to hear him, to obey, the free will to obey. That's what we should strive. When we say one of the commandments, love the Lord thy God with all our might, strength, soul, love everything, everything. You love them to the max and you will obey when he asked you to do something. You want to be a righteous person, not to get fame for yourself, but to please God. And it's just like Pastor Stewart told Frank that day that Jesus died for him. He died for every one of us. And that is where a personal relationships come in with Jesus. And it's not that hard. If you want to have that relationship with Jesus, you, you can, when you make up your mind that you want to be a righteous person, a God-fearing person, just sit down and have a talk with God and ask Jesus to come into your heart as Lord and Savior of your life. He will guide you from that day on, and you will know it's him, undoubtedly. So, I just hope and pray that everybody 
that tunes into this video that will try more and more and ask God for guidance, ask for our spiritual ears and our center of consciousness and our mind to do the will of God. And pleasing God is one of the greatest things on earth that we can do. If you... The thought just came to me that when Clemson won the national championship, the coach was interviewed right after the game. And the announcer was saying, how can you explain the joy of winning a national champion? And you know what his answer was? There is no joy greater, greater than knowing Jesus Christ. That was his answer. So when you, when you accept Jesus, you will understand where he was coming from and you will understand where you're going because he has great things for us to do. So till the next, I guess, fourth, third Monday, God bless everyone. And I'm praying that somebody in the area of my voice tonight will just ask the Lord and ask him, Jesus, come into my life as Lord and Savior, that I want to please you and not me. And I thank you for the opportunity that New Beginnings Church gives us to be here on this video. Thank you very much, and God bless you, and We'll see you in three or four weeks.